usually start with a joke, but I don't have enough time for this. Um, and it usually gets cut out when the video goes online, so it starts with people laughing with just me being on stage. I'm Stelios, I'm doing a PhD in Architectural History and Theory here. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, my research concerns postmodern architecture um, in Greece, the postmodern years of architecture in Greece. And um, I'm using the term postmodern years exactly to uh, stress the fact that I'm interested in not in what is postmodern architecture, not a theoretical definition of it, but how it got built, what was its historical reception. And um, I'm using two buildings to anchor my research. The first one is an apartment building in Athens. The second one is an office building, the Rhodes branch of the Union Bank in Rhodes in Greece. And those two buildings are about 10 years apart from each other. Um, the architects behind them are uh, Susanna and Dimitris Andonakakis. Uh, Susanna and Dimitris, they studied uh, architecture in the National Technical University of Athens in the late 50s and some of their most significant influences include the Greek architects Dimitris Pikionis and Aris Konstantinidis who are presently regarded as uh, the founding fathers more or less of modern Greek architecture but also uh, James Speyer who was a former student of Mies and uh, was teaching um, in Athens in the last three years of that decade. So this is more or less their modernist legacy that feeds into their work. Um, but Susanna and Dimitris also enjoyed a very close friendship with Dutch architects Aldo van Eyck. So um, they were also uh, very well aware of uh, the Team 10 members' critiques to the modern movement uh, in architecture. And um, this kind of critique to the modern movement seemed to resonate very well, in fact, with Pikionis' uh, original teachings. And Aldo van Eyck um, famously regarded Pikionis as one of the honorary members of uh, Team 10, although he was not historically a member. Now, during the 80s, um, Susanna and Dimitris traveled to Venice to um, see the first Biennale of Architecture that was dedicated to postmodernism. Um, around the same time, they received um, Venturi's Complexity and Contradiction in Architecture, the French translation of it, um, as a gift from a friend. And uh, they were also subscribed to AD um, and following the regular feature on postmodern architecture. Um, and there is this widespread notion that their architecture has uh, somehow turned postmodern uh, after 1983. And usually, this building, this bank, um, is considered to uh, signal this kind of postmodern turn in their work. But um, around the same time, in the early 80s, um, Jonis and Lefebvre and later Frampton uh, also interpret their work as being part of their own uh, critical regionalist bandwagon. And this is also the moment uh, when Frampton includes the first building, uh, the apartment building in Athens, in his second edition of uh, the critical history of uh, modern architecture. Um, and he also edits a monograph of their work published by Risoli. So this is somehow the external input to their work, and I would like now to go to the output of their work and see how it interacts in this circulation. So um, Dimitris and Susanna founded Atelier 66, a um, collaborative architectural practice that operated under terms that can still be considered rather progressive, even by today's standards. And they eventually gathered more than 12 architects under its roof. Um, at the same time, Dimitris was also teaching at the Antigua Athens School of Architecture for about three decades, from 1959 to 1992. And what happened was many of his former students in the school um, went on to become members of the practice of Atelier 66 when they graduated. And there they, they worked mostly with Susanna, while Dimitri was more focused in his uh, academic teaching. Now, what happened was some of these former students that worked in the office um, like Dina Vayu, Aleka Manuvasitu, uh, Babalu and Fotiu, they, they also started teaching in Athens as a new law for academic education came in effect after 1982 and somehow they formed an, an informal cluster of teachers in the school. Meanwhile, a very different um, sort of um, output of uh, Dimitris' teaching um, is uh, coming out from um, some of his most politically active students who are eventually contributing to the shaping um, uh, counter-cultural sphere, um, new left or post-Marxist 
of uh, the 80s Greece. Now, Dimitris and Susanna, is also, uh, their work is also repeatedly featured in architectural magazines of the period, the mainstream periodicals, and um, their relations with the publishers have been beneficial. For instance, it was Georgos Simeforidis who initially drew Frampton's attention to this building, um, and uh, also uh, Greek publisher Orestes Dumanis was close to them and uh, assigned them to design his own house. But also, um, it was Dumanis, this Greek publisher, that um, initially prompted Jonis and Lefebvre to write their original 1981 article on the architecture of Atelier 66 as a flagship work of critical regionalism. And uh, this was done in support of Dimitris's first rejected attempt to be elected as a chair of architectural design at the Athens School of Architecture. Um, and while this, all this happens and all these different influences uh, go in there and interact with each other, Susanna, on the other hand, um, amidst all this in 1983, as uh, board president of the Technical Chamber of Greece, went on to organize a conference on the legacy of the Athens Charters, um, the Athens Charters 50 years after the fourth uh, Siam. And a lot of the people who were initially, who had initially participated in it, um, uh, participated in this, like Van Esteren, but also people like Van Eyck, um, like Jean-Louis Cohen, uh, Jans Despotopoulos, um, and a lot of other, Georgos uh, Kandelis, and a lot of other architects um, participated in this huge event. So I, I'm rather fascinated by this multifarious nature of this web of their ties and influences and the way their input and output circulations uh, um, interact, and I cannot help but wonder how many faces of the modern and the postmodern can still be retrieved from this decade-long story underlying these buildings. And next time we meet, I hope I can put this um, uh, tangled uh, clump of wires in the wider European context in which this story takes place, creating uh, networks of influence and collaboration, but also maybe resistance. So stay tuned. Thank you very much.